Honorable Senators, I'm disappointed that the Chamber has chosen not to endorse the amendment to raise the age of access to marijuana to 21. I still maintain that it is important to keep marijuana out of the hands of youth and as much as possible out of their peer environment. For this reason, I will soon move an amendment to compromise on raising the age of access instead to age 19. I feel very strongly that we must consider the impact marijuana has on developing young brains and that we need to do whatever we can here in the Senate of Canada to mitigate that before this bill is passed into law. Raising the age of access to marijuana to 19 years would at least elevate it somewhat out of school-age kids. In my last speech, I outlined for you some of the concerns that the medical community has expressed regarding marijuana and brains of young people and the impact of marijuana on youth mental health. There is significant evidence showing links between marijuana use and psychosis and the onset of schizophrenia, as well as problems with depression, anxiety, and addiction. I also wanted to briefly speak about the message that legalization of marijuana in Bill C-45 sends to our young people. The Canadian Pediatric Society position statement of 2017 on marijuana and youth stated that, quote, a concerning inverse relationship exists such that as the perceived harm relates to cannabis use decreases, the frequency of cannabis use increases. This should give us reason to pause, Honourable Senators. When the Trudeau government makes marijuana legal, young people hear the message that marijuana is not harmful, that it's no big deal. We do not want youth access to marijuana to become even more widespread than it already is. The state of Colorado, a jurisdiction with legalized marijuana, has experienced the highest state prevalence for use in marijuana at a time when most other states have seen their rates decline. The more normalized something is, the more ubiquitous it becomes. This influences young people's choices to a certain extent. Studies have shown that young people are more likely to try marijuana if key individuals in their lives, either family or friends, use it around them. Similarly, increased opportunity to access marijuana will contribute to it as well. Given that C45 allows for retail sales, online purchasing with postal delivery, and especially home cultivation of marijuana, this will undoubtedly be an issue. In its January 2017 study, the Canadian Centre for Substance Abuse outlined adolescent attitudes and myths around marijuana that many young people hold. One is that if a substance is legal, it must be safe. Another is that it's impossible to overdose on marijuana and that ingesting too much marijuana would not result in hospitalization. Yet another was that because marijuana was derived directly from a plant, it was natural and therefore not harmful. Further, many young people with mental health issues may self-medicate with marijuana in place of seeking professional diagnosis and treatment, which may compound their mental illness and lead to even bigger issues down the road. One significant belief held by a lot of young people is the myth that marijuana is not addictive. It certainly can be honourable senators. As many of you know, I first became a mental health advocate when my own late husband, MP Dave Batters, fought issues of anxiety, depression, addiction and ultimately, tragically, suicide. At one point, Dave had been in an inpatient treatment centre and I remember him telling me that a number of people in that facility were there solely to treat an addiction to marijuana. It is simply not true that it is not addictive. Given the significant impacts marijuana can have on the developing adolescent's brain and mental health, it is critical that such harm is mitigated. How do we do that, Honourable Senators? I don't agree that the answer is making marijuana more available to kids under a social sharing clause or approving home cultivation. You don't tell your kids not to drink and drive and then give them a beer in one hand and your car keys in the other. Raising the age of possession and consumption to 19 would at least help to limit the opportunity for young people to consume marijuana. Dr. Robert Millen, a University of Ottawa psychiatrist and professor specialising in child and adolescent psychiatry, testified before the Senate Social Affairs Committee that the early young adult years, over 18, are increasingly vulnerable to negative outcomes from marijuana use. He said, quote, We know from studies recently that the area of highest growth in cannabis use disorders was that age group of 18 to 21, college-age kids or university-age kids, depending on your source. We know that it has changed. We also know that's also the age with the likelihood of the onset of many substance use disorders, quote. He then went on to advise, quote, I can tell you that if you're trying to bring it out of the most vulnerable, you're looking at at least 19 years of age, quote. If the age of access for marijuana remains at 18, we can expect increased usage among young people. That will come at an enormous cost to the mental health of Canadian youth, and it will put tremendous pressure on an already much overburdened mental health care system. The Trudeau government has claimed time and again that the purpose of Bill C-45 is to keep marijuana out of the hands of young people. If that's really the case, it's time to prove it. 
The medical community has strongly advocated for an increased age of access for marijuana because it recognizes the very serious implications marijuana can have on the brain development and mental health of young people. While the Canadian Medical Association and the Canadian Psychiatric Association have advocated raising that age to 21, this Senate chamber voted against that. I therefore propose the age of 19 as an alternative so that we can at least try to diminish the availability of marijuana among hundreds of thousands of Canadian high school students. Therefore, honourable colleagues, I move that Bill C-45 be not now read a third time, but, it, but that it be amended, A, by replacing 18 with 19, I in Clause 8 on page 7 in line 2, II in Clause 9, A on page 9 in line 16, and B on page 10 in line 7 and 13, Triple I in Clause 10 on page 11 in lines 10, 11, 18, and 25, IV in Clause 12 on page 13 in lines 13, 21, and 28, V in Clause 17 on page 18 in lines 18 and 33, and VI in Clause 32 on page 24 in line 15. B, by replacing a young person with an individual who is 12 years of age or older but under 19 years of age, I in Clause 8 on page 7 in line 9, and II in Clause 12 on page 14 in line 2, C in Clause 9, I on page 9 by replacing line 14 with the following, quote, that 30 grams of dried cannabis if the individual is 19 years of age or older or to more than 5 grams of dried cannabis if the individual is 18 years of age and double I on page 11 by replacing subsection 5.1 added by a decision of the Senate on June 5, 2018 with the following, 5.1, despite paragraph 5A, a charge arising from out of a contravention of subparagraph 1A double I in respect of cannabis of one or more classes of cannabis, the total amount of which as determined in accordance with Schedule 3 is equivalent to 5 grams or less of dried cannabis, is not to be prosecuted by indictment if the accused is less than two years older or less than one year younger than the individual referred to in that subparagraph. D in Clause 12 on page 14 by replacing line 16 with the following, 4, 5, 6, and 7, or any organization that contravenes sub E in clause 32 on page 24I by replacing line 12 with the following, to sell a cannabis accessory to an individual who is under 19 years of age, and double I by replacing line 14 with the following, that the accused believed that the individual referred F in clause 51 on page 29, I by replacing line 15 with the following, the contravention of any of paragraphs 8 sub 1 sub A, B, or and C, or any of, and double I by replacing paragraph A.1 added by decision of the Senate on June 5, 2018 with the following A.1 proceedings in respect of an offence arising out of a contravention of subparagraph 91A double I in respect of cannabis of one or more classes of cannabis the total amount of which as determined in accordance with schedule 3 is equivalent to five grams or less of dried cannabis if the accused is less than two years older or less than one year younger than the individual referred to in that subparagraph G in clause 62 on page 37 by replacing line 11 with the following I an individual who is under 19 years of age and H in clause 69 on page 40 by replacing line 26 with the following B they may not sell cannabis to individuals who are under 19 years of age Thank you, Honourable Senators. I ask for your support. In amendment, it was moved by the Honourable Senator Batter, seconded by the Honourable Senator O. The Bill C-45 be not read a third time, but that it be amended. May I dispense? On debate. No, I'm sorry. We have a couple of pe people who'd like to speak. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Senator. They have one, we have one minute and 23 seconds left. Who would like to ask us a question? Oh, you, oh, I see you wanted the question. No, there's people who want to speak on debate. No, there's people who want to speak on debate. On, de on debate, Senator Olson. And can you turn back the clock? Uh, thank you all. And I just want to add my support for this, uh, this amendment. And it's based on something uh, we've heard a lot in the Senate um, and what we've discovered through our debates and committee hearings, but what's happening in our provinces. So in um, Saskatchewan doctors through the Medical Association said the minimum age ought to be set at 25, but they were willing to compromise on 21. Alberta Health Services, which manages the Albertan health system, called for a legal age of 21. In New Brunswick, the uh, New Brunswick Medical Society uh, recommended we adopt a minimum age of 25, and I'll quote from their report. 
From a medical perspective, we believe that cannabis should not be sold to young adults under 25, but balancing societal access and preventing illicit purchase by young adults may necessitate a legal age at 21. C45 sets the minimum age for cannabis at 18. From a medical perspective and evidence-based perspective, this is far too low. From a legislative perspective, it's problematic. Most of the provinces have adopted the minimum age of alcohol consumption as their benchmark for cannabis. And as you are aware, the age for alcohol consumption varies by each province. The same is now true with cannabis. The conflict between the provincial legislation and federal legislation and under other provincial legislation is not, in my opinion, uh, is not simply my opinion. It comes from directly from New Brunswick's Working Group for Cannabis Legalization. There, in their 2017 report, they stated the federal government and Canadian Task Force on Cannabis Legalization and Regulation have recommended the national minimum age for cannabis use be 18. This is younger than New Brunswick's minimum age, legal age, for the purchase of tobacco and alcohol, and lower than the legal age of majority, which is 19 in, uh, in New Brunswick. This would make it difficult to implement and enforce. Medical experts would not support this minimum purchase age because of the health risks for the youth. A previous amendment reflecting the advice of Canada's doctors was rejected, and this is unfortunate, but we still have time to improve this bill. Setting the legal age at 19, as the amendment before us does, sets a new benchmark that all provinces can follow. C45 had more than 50 drafting errors pointed out before it got to this point. So I urge you to let's work together to eliminate another by doing so to ensure better enforceability and fulfill a key goal of public policy, better protection of our youth. Thank you, Senators. Are Senators ready for the question? In amendment, it was moved by the Honourable Senator Batters, seconded by the Honourable Senator O, that Bill C-45 be not read a third time. May I dispense, or shall I read it? Is it your pleasure, honorable senators, to approve the amendment? No. May I have here those who would like to have the amendment? Want yes. the amendment? Those who are against the amendment? Yes. I think the yeas have it. Oh, I should. <laughs> The yeas have it. <laughs> Eight o'clock. <laughs> Excuse me. Call in all the senators at 8 o'clock. <laughs>